Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen, June 4th, 2018. Uh, please call to order at 639. Uh, we, our first uh, order of business is we have an appointment with Mark Faberman from Faberman Design and it's concerned wayfinding and branding. Mark, take it away. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Hey there. The background of this project is that Sherry, in 2016, uh, um, made a proposal to the state, the Department of Housing and Community Development, and uh, Sunderland, because it was so well written, Sunderland <laughs> was chosen for this grant. The grant pays the fees in my firm to help the community develop branding and then how that branding can be applied to signage and wayfinding to help uh, create the sense of place and the sense of destination and the sense of arrival <coughs> for uh, the town of Sunderland. So tonight I'm gonna go through a little bit of our <coughs> experience. We started this, what, in August, September last year? Yeah, it was, yeah. 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 Was the first meeting. Yeah, and then uh, uh, we had several meetings since then and we broke it down to two <coughs> options. And hopefully you'll like <coughs> one of these options and we can get a blessing from you tonight as you are the um, street and sidewalk commissioners. I'm sure you're and, aware. And sewer. And sewer, okay. Um, uh, above ground and underground. I'm above and both, that's exactly right. <laughs> and then I can write a report to the state and, and see it, say how uh, interesting the whole process was here. This is the smallest community uh, that we have ever done this project for. I started doing it uh, uh, in, in 2014. Um, uh, last year we had five, before that we had a two and two, and this coming year we're going to have six communities around the state, uh, just to give you a little bit of context. So, uh, if you can turn the lights down and, and you can bear with me, I'm going to try to go through this uh, quickly because I know that uh, succinctness and brevity are, are uh, high attributes for this group. Absolutely. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. So the first question we asked of, of the advisory committee and the staff who were involved was, uh, where is Sunderland? And uh, so that we, we can get a, a sense of uh, context and, and where, where we are. So the next slide, please. Uh, so I thought showing these uh, views would show uh, other places, it sort of puts uh, Sunderland in, in a position. Next slide. And next slide. So you can see in the state uh, where it's located, and you can see in, in Franklin County where it's located. The next thing we looked at was content and what is Sunderland. So it's certainly a beautiful bucolic setting on the Connecticut River and, and mountains nearby. You know, um, the only thing I wanted about that, I love the picture going toward Deerfield. No, <laughs> going looking north, but nobody nobody ever takes Not that much picture. Of, there's and no it's yeah, such a great. Right. Have you, if you ever done so the left leg? I know. It, it, if you come out and, and look that way, it's such a wonderful picture. It Sorry, I, I but it's always well, people always always do the center and the, looking down. Exactly. But well, that's important. The other. That's right. important that you said that. It's true. Uh, so we try to capture what uh, the essence was by uh, showing different aspects of what Sunderland uh, is. Next. And of course the famous uh, button wall tree, uh, the famous bridge, both historic and new, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, how, how should I say this? Um, uh, optional or alternative, alternative lifestyle things. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, the Blue Heron, which was the former town hall. Uh, some of the retail establishments. And school. Huh? And school. And school, that's right. That's right. A uh, key point. And some of the events and some of the uh, types of eating establishments. Mike's Maze, which is uh, a major uh, attraction. And the history of the town. <coughs> and the, the beautiful vistas around the town. And we looked at 
what graphic elements would be um, influencing us if there was something that would be uniquely Sunderland. Uh, the committee was not as big on us uh, working with the Buttonwall Treaty. They felt it was not as uh, symbolic in certain ways as they would have liked. Uh, different housing, including farmhouses. Uh, the new library, which is another great symbol here. Uh, of course, the town hall, which looks like it was a school, too. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. So, uh, fourth grade right here. <laughs> hmm. what, is, what is branding? Branding is identity or visual appearance. It's intangible assets that add value. It's a positive image to visitors and residents. So it's not quite toothpaste or, or uh, laundry detergent in a, in a city or a community. It has a different type of thing, but it's trying to uh, somehow uh, underscore the essence of, 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 of a place. Next, um, it, it underscores and reinforces a sense of arrival, a sense of place, a sense of destination, and a shared sense of experience. So this is true of both residents and businesses and visitors. So we went through a process called an ideation exercise, and we asked the questions, how would you describe Sunderland in one word? How would you describe it in two words? And how would you describe it in three or more words? Now, sometimes out of this exercise, there is poetry that is written. Now, in this particular case, nobody seemed to agree that, uh, of the, the poetry. But it was a nice exercise to try to uh, see what people thought and felt about the community. I love the three in a row, if I could, Mr. Chair. In the two words right above each other are uh, bird migration, fish hatchery, student housing, rare species. One, two, three, four. That's a poem. <laughs> haiku. Uh, not quite a haiku. But it's an interesting structure the way they happen to land. <laughs> no? I didn't notice that. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, it's three really random things. Correct. And yet thematic. And connected. Very correct. <laughs> Then we asked what colors would be the, the appropriate colors. We asked for symbols. And then we asked uh, a, a future orientation. What do you thought the future should be? And uh, that, that, I think, came out very well, the, the, the future. <clears throat> the agritourism, I think, is a wonderful thing to think about uh, for this community. And, and probably would bring some uh, additions to the economy. Well, we're um, already thinking about that. Um, you, you have walkability and mobility here in an interesting way. It's different. Hmm. It's not urban. It's, it's uh, country, mm -hmm. rural. But it has a lot of nice uh, layers to that as well. Next. So out of all this uh, 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 ideation and imaging, we came up with basically two ideas that the advisory committee liked. Um, we rejected a number of them, but I'm going to show you two tonight. And hopefully you'll like one of them. So the first one was sort of the sense of the rural, the sense of uh, uh, growing. But also, there's a certain sophistication to this. This is done in a painterly way. It's, it's rather, rather elegant. And the next one is uh, uh, the, the Connecticut River. And uh, uh, that, again, makes a statement about the community. And also, the bend in the river and the flow of the river suggest history and future, as well as presence. So we take these two. Next slide, please. And this is the family of elements that we're recommending. Now, the family of, of, of elements uh, and you may want to ask me later how much all this costs to implement, and I will have an answer. But um, the, the two largest ones are gateways, so there would, there would be entrance signs at the various major highways. There would be uh, a, a family of parking signs that would help direct people to parking if you need that. Um, the other signs could be made into to, um, directional signs as well. And, uh, and, and different forms, and then trail signs, the smallest ones. So there, there's a series of elements there. The, the um, next slide. 
and this is, if, it's, if it was a little darker, I think you could see this. Can we turn the lights down a little bit lower? Can we do that? Chief, I'm to grab one more. There's only one more off switch. <laughs> then we're talking about the sun. Okay. So these, these show you how that works. Um, the, uh, each of them is, is an element that, that uh, can be done uh, in, in, in a way in which it could be a phased um, series of things. So you need not, in most towns, don't do this. Uh, they don't put them all up at once. They phase them in over several That's years in the, in the town. Or a generous uh, benefactor like a bank will give uh, some money toward it. Could I ask to go back? Sure. Back one slide. Thank you. Thank you. Go for the full on theater. Take care of the song. You want to go back? What? Wait, wait. Any discussion that you would like to? It's a, it's it's interesting because um, Sunderland at one point was known for its corn brooms. And that the other son, the other, the A, almost, it's, it, those aren't corn stalks, but uh, I could envision corn, you know, the corn. Well, brooms. that was one of them, one of the options we did, but the committee felt that that was something they didn't want to see. So. Mm -hmm. But we, I'd be happy to share that with you. I, I just, I, I would just, like, I know like in our 250th, they, uh, the Sunland was basically on the map because of the, our corn broom business at that time, so that's okay. I mean, I mean, I'm intrigued, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yep, go ahead. Toggling between the two, I think that the uh, bend in the river is used a little more ubiquitously. There is also likely some, uh, there are some professional artists who have endeavored to try to get that image um, marked. I also think there is an elegant simplicity. I think there's an elegant, sim there's a, everyone knows the bend in the river. They also know that comes from Mount Sugarloaf. They also know <laughs> half of it is Deerfield. That half of it's Deerfield. <laughs> I would suggest oh, that sorry, Tog, I would suggest or in Waitley. I would suggest toggling back to the first one. It has an elegant simplicity that is um, not unlike um, designers in the in the in the ilk of uh, you know Paul Rand or others would look and say, ah, got it. Something really simple and it really speaks to uh, a brand. That speaks to a brand, the other speaks to a setting. All the things you said about the view, and, and I've shown these. And people love the view. Right. I've yep. shown these to other people at other meetings, mm -hmm. and I had somebody from Deerfield say, well, this is, you see this from Deerfield. <laughs> well, I, I, I totally get it. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's something synonymous, synonymous about that view, and it does look partially on the landscape of Sunderland. I don't know if that stands out as a brand. I, I know one of the issues that people had with this is that they felt it smacked too much of Kansas, perhaps, as opposed sure. to Sunderland. Sure, sure. That was one of the concerns sure. with the committee. But I get the simplistic graphic mm -hmm. elements. And what do you thought? Um, I also think a lot of the other towns in the area use that view of the river as Bingo. their own kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that yep. blends us in with everything else. And if we do something that's not like that, it puts us out of the crowd. Mm -hmm. like Maybe we should have done the view going north. I, I like the view north. I, I've always, I've always enjoyed the view north, and and I think it's one of the banks they do a, maybe it's Florence Bank or mm -hmm. People's Bank or whatever, 
in and it's an early morning with the uh, sure. with the uh, fog lifting, lifting off, off sure. the river, looking north. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I just could look at that picture forever. I was in Sedona, Arizona, a decade ago, and the photo of the river from Sugarloaf was in a uh, high-end art gallery. Really? Yep. Ah. There's, There's a, a lot of water there, huh? Well, the photographers from the area, but also out huh. there. And I'm like, I know where that is. Yeah, well, it's an unmistakable view. It's an unmistakable view. You have an un uninterrupted <coughs> view sure. from there to the Holyoke Range. The question is, does that make it more known, or is the wayfinding branding part of you know, uh, signage as well as a broader reach? It can be argued that this this right here stands towards something that's graphic as opposed to scenic. You're, right. you're discussing scenic. So many people know that bend in the river. And, and I but think, is that good or bad? Well, that's it. Because <coughs> it's well known, but does it sure. really associate it with Sunderland? Sure. Good thing? question. So, Mark, you, you said that you had other thoughts on, on that background there on the right hand side? Well, we had corn stalks, yeah. actually, and, and and people felt well, it, it's it's not just corn here; it's 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 Good more, point. Of a, you know. And so what we did is we picked some wild grass, basically, mm -hmm. and that's what that is. So it it, it it's more of a rural sure. type of uh, agricultural uh, image. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would... a lot of people have have said about these two mm -hmm. um, that this one, as you said, was very elegant. Mm -hmm. And it's very distinct, as you said. It's not does not look like any anything else around right. or any other community in the Commonwealth. So that, that's that's two very positive pieces about it. The on the other hand, the the look of the uh, of the river is, uh, as you said, ubiquitous and important. And and you're putting your your you know you're branding it or using it to brand you. In a very strong way, so so there's interesting. push and pull from both. I would, I would say, Mr. Chair, that in my my short tenure of nearly 30 years here, walking down toward the cemetery, we have gone from what could have been uh, uh, the the Christos Gates, i.e., the version that is the now removed tobacco netting, yeah. to corn, and this year for the first time there was large rolled hay. Yes. Straw. Yep, straw. That that talks to me not necessarily about progress, but progression, right? Necessity yeah. progression. It's, you you yeah. don't necessarily see a lot of big rolls of hay running around Western Mass, certainly around Sunderland. I know there's a need for that. But again, in a, in a, a short window, you've gone from that method, onions preceded the tobacco. The tobacco nets are gone. Now we've got straw. Potatoes are creeping in. Potatoes are creeping in. Is there like some kind of plant that's, I guess, stood the test of time? Poison ivy. Poison <laughs> ivy. <laughs> Knotweed and bittersweet. I mean, we'd be unique. <laughs> I feel like putting feel the itch. agriculture on is more subject to the time period that we do this in, and like 20 Correct. years down the road, yep. Yep. we might not be growing wheat anymore. Like, well, right that's exactly Great point. it. Wildflowers or something. Crops or evolve. Here. It was sunflowers for a number of years in this north side. Was it really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. When you I got a whole bunch of sunflowers. Yep. Sunflowers. Yep. yep. Yeah, and crops are constantly evolving based on market conditions and, you know. Interesting. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for all the work. It's a very interesting. Uh, and you, and you had, we had a committee that would show up too and, and um, be involved. And nice. so. It, it was it's definitely a community effort. Hmm. It's interesting because, uh, like like Scott, I I, I think uh, s towns don't think about branding um, as much, but it's but it's funny because if you read the newspaper of late, you'll notice that one of our neighbors from across the river. Um, is is having a big discussion about a, a business yeah, that wants to, business. Yeah. and they get branded yep. as home of that business yep. by association yep by association yep. and not not something necessarily you'd want to be known for mm -hmm. but um but it's such a small part of that community 
I mean, I don't because I've lived here my whole life, sort of, but I don't think I don't think of that business as defining that town. But I bet you, if you talk to people that outside of fifteen miles from here, twenty miles, that's the only thing that they would think about. Correct. But and that's so that's been branded by sure. Huh. Interesting. And and you and you strive not to have a br- bad brand. Right. right. All right. So what's our next step? You like us to pick one of these? It would be nice if you would pick one, and and then. Uh, we, we could write a nice report because I had to write a report for several years ago. Community, put one online for the community to vote on. Yep. And they got 33, 33, and 34 percent vote. Wow. On the three. So I never put three up anymore. I only put two. <laughs> <laughs> but, <Wow>. I, <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, so it would be nice if, if you feel comfortable enough to vote on it. It, it would be great if we could. Get I think we're. we're you feel comfortable, Scott? Absolutely. Davey? Um, well, I have one question. Do, do we want any feedback from the committee at all into this, or? I assume they recommended the two of us, the, the two styles. At the last These meeting. These came yes. out of the committee's recommendations. Yeah, at the last meeting. And by and, the... And, I mean, then, then, then we'd have, then we have to sell, sell them anyways. Mm-hmm. I mean, the town on, on the branding, so. Mm-hmm. Well, the, I think the, the advisory committee, though, or representative yeah. Of, yeah. of the town. So it wasn't like you, and, and the meetings were, as this meeting yep. is a public <clears throat> meeting and people could come, right? Yeah. Then we, we need to move the process forward. We did. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chair, move to endorse uh, sign A and, and symbol A. Okay, we have a motion for A. Out of those two, I'll second. Okay. Uh, mo- we have a motion made and seconded to uh, look at Sunderland with some wild grasses. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> I opposed. Did you vote? Oh, aye. Sorry. Three zero. I was I was deep in thought about the grass. I, uh, you know, I, are you hedging for Comic Sans font? Yeah. Don't do it. Oh God! Don't get me started on fonts. <laughs> Please don't get me started on fonts. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Thank you the next it. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a report, yes. and I'm going to send it to Sherry, and she can share it with you, Absolutely. and you correct it or you know anything I didn't get right, Perfect. and then and then we submit that to the state, mm-hmm. and then the state under their. Um, um, Massachusetts Downtown Initiative. Yep. Post those online, and other communities can then read the report and okay. find out about it. Excellent. That. That's great. Thanks for all your help. Thank you for your your, your time. Thank you. It, it was uh, it was I I, I enjoyed I, I enjoyed your presentation. I I, I like the word association. Mm-hmm. Those. Yeah. I didn't see the poem, but you I could, respect. Take all those words and get them the, magnets and put the, them on your fridge, Tom. It, you can play with them for weeks. That that uh, word ideation is something I came up with. I learned a, 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 a variation of that. I was my firm was one of the five firms that designed the 1996 Olympics mm-hmm. in Atlanta, and you can imagine the egos of design firms fighting with each other. So somebody came up with words that we could agree on, and that's how. Yeah, and that's so a great I've, point. I've refined it to to this so that people can really embrace it a lot easier than. It's wonderful. Uh, it's a, it's yeah. a great great way to go about it. Excellent, Mark. So, very good. Thank, thank you, you very sir. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Excellent. Sherry has your contact info. Yes. Great. So, I'll be in touch with you. All right. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Chief, can uh, you want to step up forward? If if it's okay, I'd like to uh, skip Snap over those a few lights things on. and go. Thanks, Chief. We have a uh, we have Chief in here. We have a second. We've been working on the chief's uh, contract for a while. Um, I, I guess if I could just say we've been working on it for a while. Um, on my part, it didn't have a sense of urgency because I've been very happy with the, the work that the chief and the department's been doing. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have a sense of urgency. And I think from my conversations with the chief, he didn't have a sense of urgency because he was 
happy with what what he does and with a town and his department and and it's a the one thing I understand is that contracts are especially our upper management chiefs and town administrators and those that we by law can have contracts with are very good because it, it defines it, it defines our working relationship not who we are but it, it takes away any ambiguity that may come up and it also gives us a way to solve any discussion points that come up the chief did have a few few uh, points of of, of uh, clarification one was the awarding of sick time um, I think we've taken care of that um, it's amazing just eliminating a word or yeah. a couple word <coughs> a phrase can make things a little bit easier if I, um, Mr. Chair, if I could, that, that yep. administratively, there's a tension oftentimes between contracts and the bylaw and having those having that tension resolved oftentimes paves the way for a, a much long, a, a longer term relationship. Mm -hmm. We adopt bylaws, but they're not necessarily as <coughs> adaptive as contracts are. Right. I agree, Scott. And, and this is a... Uh, uh, a three-year um, contract that we'd like to enter into run from July 1, 2018 up through June 30th, 2021. Uh, significance of that is that the contract will be run fiscal year to fiscal year. That's something that we have strived, strived to do in the past and, and we've been able to make that, make that work. Um, Chief, you have any comments, thoughts? No, basically, <clears throat> excuse me. Like you said before, I didn't really have any urgency. I really enjoyed uh, working uh, with my fellow uh, officers, and and the town has been extremely welcoming, both here in this building and out in the public. So I really enjoy it. Plus, we wanted to get him under contract before the uh, three hundred raise <laughs> up because he may want to run away after <laughs> the next two weeks. It's going to be a very this will uh, be the large. Look this at the film from two years ago. I'm a little grayer now. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Well, you know what the, the issues they have with soccer hooliganism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, it's this coming here. The largest indemnification you've ever done. Ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Quite interesting. It, it's a uh, and, and again, it just it just you know we talk about we talk about pay we talk about you know, the, the length, the term, the hours that work. Um, and, and just one of the things that we like to remind our, our residents is that the chief runs a 24 seven operation. Right. And we don't, we're not, we don't tell the chief that he has to be in his, sit in his chair every morning at seven, seven o'clock in the morning to go with three. He's got three, he's got three shifts that he has to manage. So, the chief, you know, will have many typical days where he's in and doing what he has to do at a certain time. Um, we always know how to get hold of him. We can, he can get hold of us. Um, but we we have always thought it was very important that the chief have the that the chief of the police, fire, whoever ha, has the ability to do what he thinks is right for his department. And if that means meeting with his second and third shift at 11 o'clock at night because they're both their time, right. then I'm not going to tell the chief he can do that or he can't do that. We want him to do what's best for his for his department. He has part-timers at work probably sometimes that he, he wouldn't be on a normal Monday through Monday through Friday. And if the chief wants to come in on a Saturday night to see what's going on and you know work a few hours less on Friday so he could come and do that, we are not going to micromanage those hours because he we expect we know he knows what he what how many hours he's needs to put in a week and so we don't adjust that so i think it on for me it's a i i think we have a fair contract uh we've had it vetted through our our uh, town council he's he's all set with it so uh with that um chief you have any other comments no sir scott david comments I I think he's been doing a great job. I think one of the testaments is how few items we've had to spend on our agendas discussing police department issues compared to 
you know, past years and things like that. And, um, <clears throat> to, to piggyback on David's point, we had a presentation about branding versus turnover with part-time help or et cetera, et cetera. So yep. for that, all your work is, uh, is uh, well recognized, Chief. Thank you. All right, may I have, uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, sign this contract. Motion. I'll second to move into agreement for a three year relationship with uh, Chief Eric. All those in any discussion? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chief, I have the contract with us. We will sign it if you could sign it also. And we will have Sherry uh, do what she has to do to get you a copy if that's okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. We all brought pens. They'll be different colors, right, but we all brought pens. I bought, I had my red one from my nice. <laughs> Your red one? I like that, dude. <sighs> Can't use that. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. So. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy it. One blue. Well, I'm going to keep it. In. <laughs> it was better in the old days when the town clerk used to give us <laughs> the uh, ceremonial pens. Chief? I got three or four pens on me at work and I come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Usually you have two or three phones, too. I do. Yeah. One, yeah. two. <laughs> Today is uh, today is the June fourth, six four. Chief, thanks so much for all you do. Chief, if you want, you can keep the pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ceremonial pen. Thank you very nice. much. We got it from our insurance company. Yeah. Oh my, there you go. <laughs> that works out. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. You all set for that uh, festival weekend coming up? I heard about something. We have uh, like a parade or something going on. I I, I heard. Uh, no, it, it's it's going to go well. We uh, we've had numerous meetings with uh, with fire, EMS, uh, <coughs> planning for the uh, parade committee. Uh, as says the department are going to have our own little meeting just to go over some of the points that we have in relation to uh, not just the traffic flow, but keeping the peace and, and mm -hmm. being seen and being out there and making sure that everyone that's going to be involved, whether you're in the parade or watching it, aren't, aren't going to have a rogue vehicle coming through and, and hurting anybody. Sure. It will be, uh, it'll be interesting, um, definitely, but we, we're, we're excited and uh, look forward to it. The month of June is going to be very busy, though. Yeah, we had a, yeah. An event this past weekend, we're taking part uh, next weekend with the uh, Special Olympics, and mm -hmm. then the Father's Day weekend is the 300, so it's a busy month. Yeah, I know your, uh, your officers were on duty at Pound the Pavement. I tried to uh, cajole a few of them to running, but... Uh, <laughs> They declined, yeah. but uh, they think they also tried getting me to one too. And I, I, yeah, <laughs> I was out here doing the touch a truck with the with the kids. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that, Chief. We'll talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, a actually, the, I I thought uh, it's amazing how well organized that the pound of pavement is. It, uh -huh. It's they're exceptionally well. They do a great job. Uh, I give a lot of credit to the uh, to the parties that worked tirelessly on getting the planning and the organizing, and then and sharing a lot of the responsibility with us. So it's a great partnership. Yeah, they did. They did a wonderful job. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you very much. Looking Have forward a great to evening. thanks. You too. Looking forward to a very profitable no. next three years between Definitely. The, between the board and yourself. Two years just flew by. I know, right? Has it been two years already? Uh, August twenty yeah. second or something. Oh. Yeah. Sat right out oh. there. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right, thank thanks. You. Have a good night. All right. Back up. Next up is the approval of the minutes from uh, 521 18. Uh, motion on those. Have a motion? Uh, I'll second. A motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of 521 18 as presented. All those in support, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have three zeros here. There's Sherry. Old business, Board of Selectmen updates. Scott, David? I don't have any updates this week. If I could, Mr. Chair, sure. the, the um, 120 North Main uh, folks uh, met with RDI, got an update 
we have presented and have a continuation of a hearing with the Conservation Commission for June next week, second week, June. I think it's a Tuesday night. Please check the Conservation Commission website. The reason for that is there is an existing application that runs out and needs to mm-hmm. be updated. You yeah. can't have two concurrent. Yeah. Along that same theme, uh, at that same meeting with the Conservation Commission, this will tie into the next piece of update, uh, the developers, the engineers and architects for uh, the Sugar Bush Meadows development are looking to extend their Conservation Commission yep. submittal, their process. Same situation. Can't have two applications concurrent. So one has to run out. And the next meeting kicks, picks right back in. So th- those are two pieces of update with respect to conservation. The Sugarbush Meadow developers have submitted a revised, as part of that time process. point process, they've submitted a revised um, plan, general arrangement plan for the ZBA to begin looking at for the building orientation. Yeah taken that footprint and massaged it. That is uh, in front of the ZBA and will be scheduled for an upcoming meeting. And that's important to bear in mind. It's also important to bear in mind that this has to do with um, the permit itself running toward the end of its clock. So any um, tweaking, substantial or insubstantial, still has to go and is under the purview of the ZBA, who's done really wonderful work getting to this point. There are a series of restrictions that the ZBA imposed, and those restrictions you know, have to be reviewed based with the, the current format. That said, building inspector's office, they haven't seen any requests for permit or anything like that with respect to uh, the Sugarbush Meadows project. I would suggest that moving some buildings on paper and making sure that we're outside of a wetlands delineation, which is part of the conservation piece, yep. uh, and away from a municipal well field. And remember, they use the term municipal because the total volume of water they plan on extracting um, are important for the ZBA and the Conservation Commission to uh, continue to review. That said, there hasn't been a lot of, um, there hasn't been any other correspondence with the town about the Sugarbush Meadow Project. Again, I think it's important to bear in mind the permit was about to run out, and they have right. to keep the permit alive. It's basically That's the position that extinction from I it. see right now. I don't nope. see groundbreaking. Right. I don't see that. <clears throat> um, and those meetings are coming up for people who are interested. Check both the ZBA, which will be posting, as well as conservation, which will be a part of their regular regular meeting agenda. Also, we had a financial team meeting this morning. I'll let Sherry speak to the, the, basic, uh, the basics of that under her update. But there are a couple of pieces. Hang on. There are a couple of pieces that I think are important for the board to have with respect to future policies. And the accountant brought up the fact that our auditor, as we're getting near the end of the budget year, last year's audit, uh, didn't ding, but basically mentioned that we had a fair amount of uh, end of year transfers and rollovers and encumbers that need to be organized, they need to be put in a, in a box in a very specific way. In some cases, either the Board of Selectmen because of its meeting schedule or the Finance Committee because of its meeting schedule, which are the last step of signing off, didn't get a chance to sign off in time. Yeah. And okay. so those funds and transfers, they didn't happen. Uh, from an auditor's perspective, I totally get it. That's, that's, that's simply administrative prerogative. Right. We need to be able to meet, after our meeting this morning, the 715 um, deadline that was given for end of year transfers was including the signatures. So the accountant's position is that our warrants should be done by the 1st of July, first week of July. Our final warrant should be in that. <coughs> 715 window to allow us to sign. That's important to bear in mind. By the 15th. By the signatures, not just the fact that the warrant's there, but the signatures, the oversight is the Board of Selectmen as well as the Finance Committee. Another piece that came out of that is that uh, as we look at our OPEB going forward, um, how we go about some of our OPEB audits as well as our audit appropriations, instead of maybe being in the budget process, meaning Mm -hmm. an expense line, 
that they are funded out of the warrant, and here's why. The OPEB goes more than one year, and having it be having it be having two year process, having it be in the expense appropriation, it closes, and so you end up with a split invoice <coughs> piece. So as if, we, if we took both of those our auditor audit functions, whether they be the general audit of the town's books or the OPEB piece, had them as warrant articles, we can carry forward. Carry it forward, and we have that as part of our process. Yeah. That's yeah. important to bear in mind as well. And again, it's I like I like the fact that these come from the discussions um, in in the morning meetings, but also as guidance from our auditors. The auditors have for years given us just smaller and smaller and smaller tasks to achieve for a good clean audit. These are just I think more forward thinking. Good and process then, improvement. Yeah, good process yep. improvement. So that'll that'll incorporate. A policy to be developed for our off from our office for this board and for future boards, as well as part of the financial planning you have in front of us, that'll incorporate the finance committee's input as well. Okay. Anything I else? My pencil scratching. The other thing we talked about was the fire truck financing. Yeah. So go ahead. No. <laughs> so so with roll. so with respect, I'm on a roll. Sorry. <laughs> so with respect to the financing of the fire truck, it, be, our um, we have we have griped loudly about uh, how uh, the town's been uh, defined with its ability to pay right for a certain assessments. Yeah. Uh, that also holds true. We have relatively low debt schedule and a relatively high bond rating. So going to the USDA to ask for money for a truck, they're like, eh, yeah, you guys, come <laughs> yeah. on, really? You can take care of that <laughs> you yourselves. Can, you can probably take care of that yourselves. Yeah. That, that said, that may not be an avenue that is even worth pursuing administratively because of the amount of um, the low layering of requests that are required. We know we have voted at town meeting. We know we have voted at the ballot box for a debt exclusion. Treasure Collector has run some early numbers to look at a five-year debt schedule. They're talking about 560 grand ish. Mm -hmm. Five-year debt schedule, ten-year debt schedule, and it's interesting the five-year debt five-year versus ten-year debt schedule. The difference on the tax rate is a, a four cents. Really, that's interesting. Five seventeen fifty four to seventeen fifty eight, and the question becomes, and you can run those numbers at, for our next meeting to bring forward to the board. Well, what does that mean for the town for interest born yeah, across awesome. the additional five years? And, and I have this for our next piece under goals, as we look at our stable, as we look at our debt schedule, we have two pieces that are excluded, three pieces that are not, but the three pieces that are not are funded, wastewater treatment funding, Title V funding, energy funding. Right. Okay. So if they're funded and the only two pieces we have and the tax rate itself are debt excluded, or should we be considering with the building assessment that's going on, with the frontier capital assessment that is being developed and those definitions I hope are, are recommended this Thursday, maybe, um, that we look at stabilizing that piece of our budget that's debt, meaning yeah. a stable tax rate. And this is a pretty popular and pretty common practice across I mean, the municipal environment, across the Commonwealth. Instead of dealing with this yeah, kind of noise generation. over the course, you kind of find that sweet spot and you kind of move in there. So again, the town of Sunderland this year has a little over a quarter of a million dollars total on its rate that are, that are, that are debt. As we talk about 58 cents or 53 cents for a five year or a 10 year. And then as we go to the 10, 20 and 25 year capital planning for our buildings, those are important discussions that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are happening right now. And that was a, um, with respect to the fire truck, I know that was a bit tangential but, or linear, but the reality is that it really doesn't make any sense for us to go to the USDA for a fire truck. We expect to come back in the next few months after the review of the contract, review of the purchase agreement from town council to recommend to the board and get the finance committee's input about you know what makes the most sense. And again, there's an, there's an inherent tension between wanting to keep the tax rate low and stable right. versus what the town actually needs to do with, res with respect to debt. Mm, right. <clears throat> anyway, that was long-winded and I apologize. 
but very well detailed. Yeah, which is, good I mean, summary. I mean, this, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the unexciting infrastructure stuff that you know it's 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 very important and yeah. and you know the the more professional and organized and everything we get with all the stuff the better. Well, it's kind off. of interesting going and we we have we have agencies in the town that have um, managed their resources well and and that we can emulate that right. the hard part about managing your resources well and having a, a decent set of reserves is when you go to the bank <laughs> and the bank right. says, like, nah, what? Well, come on, really? <laughs> so. Yep. It's always a price to pay. Right. So the, uh, David, you all set for your yes. updates? Yep. David, Scotty, anything else? I'm all set, thank you. Uh, the um, Senior Center, um, we, we held interviews for the director. Uh, we have the... the our previous director, Marlene, took a new job in Palmer. <clears throat> so we have three very, very good quali qualified applicants that uh, we've interviewed. And we will set up a date shortly to uh, discuss where we're going with that. Um, so that, that we're closing in on that. Uh, the, if any, Buddy's missed it. We have a celebration that's going to start uh, oh, the really? week of June 15th. Well, there's this big red sign in the center of town. Um, the 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 parade committee and the festival committee. Um, this is one big weekend coming up for them, and it's starting um, Friday night. And there's a list of uh, things that are going on Friday night, at, but to start at the elementary school, there's also a cake baking contest. Nice. Um, at the uh, at the uh, at the school, there are three first prizes. There's there's three different um, classifications. There's there's two there's three runners up for each one. But for those that bake, just so you know, there's a one hundred dollar first prize, um, and the judges are coming are actual bakers that uh, nice. know their stuff about baking. Do they have English accents? And are they on PBS? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. Just check. I don't think. I don't know. Um, and so they will be judged. Plus, they're everybody that. Uh, goes down they're going to try to have a uh, um, there, there's a, a huge sheet cake that's being produced for like 150 pieces so nice. people will be able to have a piece of birthday cake on Friday night as well there you go. Um, so I, I would I would recommend uh, that you take a second and go down I think the kids at the school have been practicing very hard the teachers have been working them very hard, so they, they, uh, they're putting together one heck of a show. On Saturday, the parade will start at 1 o'clock. The parade is starting at the uh, Sunderland Elementary School. The Sunderland Bridge will be closed for two hours. So no traffic will be going over the Sunderland Bridge. The, the state, the uh, DOT has, has Granted a, a bridge closure, um, so congratulations to the festival committee, parade yeah, committee, in deal. particular for getting that miracle to happen. There will be all kinds of electronic signing signage uh, on the bridge and on 91 and 116 and 63 and wherever they need to put signage. They've talked about this immensely. Um, the parade will start at one. The com the com <clears throat> the committee <coughs> is recommending that if you have visitors coming from outside of town that are that are coming into town, they're recommending that they get here early um, and preferably before um, eleven ten o'clock, just because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Main Street and Old Amherst Road and Goat 10 and 
all state park there's a there's a lot of parking that's going to take place um i think so, all the hotel rooms in town are already booked so <laughs> yeah <laughs> there there is going to be some downtown parking and 120 north main street mm -hmm. um they're, yeah. they're, they're gonna um i and i i could ask sherry if we could ask um oh in the field um george if he could take down the hanging uh shutter on on 120 north main street if you you know if you could get the bucket truck and just take that down so it doesn't fall on anybody but they plan to put some parking in in the uh um in the 120. the let's see what else after the parade will run from one to three so probably be done about 3 30 but it'll be it comes up old amherst road to Take a right onto South Main Street through the intersection North Main Street, and it'll disband at the intersection of North Main Street and um, North Silver Lane. I believe Michael and Brenda said the, from the Prey Committee that they, I believe they have 10 divisions. They have Shriners, they have a number of bands participating, including, I may add, the Frontier regional band that did an exceptional job mm -hmm. at the uh that did an exceptional job at the uh um, memorial day parade um, that that there's they're those kids make you so proud when you hear them play the way they do they're they're doing such an ec they're doing an excellent job <clears throat> but they have bands like hot tamales they got uh the massachusetts i believe the massachusetts state um those squeaky things that Bagpipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pipers. Ba they got bagpipers. They got bagpipers and drum bugles <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. They also have uh, flatbed trailers with with uh, bands playing on those. Uh, we got some floats coming in the parade. We got some tractors. We got a whole bunch of fire trucks and police cruisers that won't be blowing their sirens. Um, <laughs> so I I would I would recommend <clears throat> to come down to town center town early. And stay late because afterwards they're going to have a bunch of um, things going on in the center of town here that will culminate that evening with a uh, fireworks display that'll be from the center of town. Oh, so, be good. Um, it's so it'll be and then and then if that's not enough, um, the fire department um, is doing a bunch of stuff on Sunday as well, some demonstrations, and we got bands are playing. And I hear there's going to be a Polish genealogy stand. Well, there you go. So, I, so bring, Could be interesting. bring your bring your name, bring, bring your Bopchi's name down and your Chachi. Do they have all the stuff on their website for uh, information? Everything should so be on the website. Can, they got folks a can Facebook, head up the website for info. Facebook page and... So it should be a fun time. I know. I know uh, the committees have put the you know pray committee and, and everything has put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of planning, um, and right now they're all they're all uh, um, pulling their hair out, making sure everything goes that well. Last minute. Mm -hmm. But I, I, they, they, the amount of planning that's gone into it's amazing. So I. I got a couple of years under the belt. Now it's showtime. So it's time to get nervous. Right. Exactly. Maybe. <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> actually, actually, I look at it just the opposite of that, Scott. I just look at it. You make all the plans. You do all your due diligence. Just let it go. And and there's right. and, and you know what? There's nothing you can do right now that's going to really make a difference. Yep. So you point. either just hope for good weather. Yeah. That's all you can do because yeah. I, I I they they put the time. They put their effort. Yep. They they've got everything like they got they got a book like this with all the you know, for for they got Priscilla Russ and Russ Crenshaw doing the uh, 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 the emceeing. They have, so if you want, it'll be uh, on South Main Street, toward more towards the center. They will have uh, an MC station set up. They'll announce the the, the bands, the floats, the okay. marching units. So they have all, like they'll have all that stuff inside. So you can listen yeah. to that. Nice. So, but right now I think, um, and I would say that you can just. Lean, you know, because it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure they won't because they're very attentive to details right now. So good luck, guys. Um, 
So if we could, I'll skip over FY19 goals and go to uh, share your town administrator update. Um, a couple things. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with the Energy Committee at 9. Uh, Jim Barry was out last week. We reviewed all the um, projects under the competitive grant round. Uh, so I'm finishing up the final report and we're getting ready to um, look at projects for the next round uh, that'll be out in January, I believe. Um, I also have a meeting tomorrow morning with the uh, representatives from the school. They're interested in possibly applying for a park grant for the playground project. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So we're going to talk about uh, that and what's involved. Um, Thursday I have a STAM meeting and Small Town Administrators of Massachusetts and that evening I'm going to go to the FERCOG workshop on uh, the Cannabis Control Commission is coming out. So yes. I'll bring that information back to it's you for a, the a next day. meeting. Uh, Wednesday, we have a Complete Streets pre-construction meeting. Oh, nice. Taylor Davis will be here. We're going to um, walk the sites and uh, talk about a construction schedule. Nice. That's good. So, yeah. Okay. Questions, Scott? Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, on, on, under new business, we have parking. You mentioned 120 North Main for a parking space. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to just make sure that if that if as that unfolds, that that is, of course, a property that the town currently owns that is ringed with the butters who have concerns about the development as well as the delineation of wetlands issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, those neighbors and the affected businesses are, are in the loop as to what's happening. That We don't have a, a wound up a butter at some point going, oh, you put 150 cars back there. What the hell was that all about? Yeah. And I'm sure the committee's savvy enough to go out there and get it, but yes, sir. Yep. From, from you know from Fair from one. this body's perspective, that's a delicate subject. Yep, that makes sense. And and I'm sure that in uh, at our 350th anniversary, we won't have be able to put because any cars parking out there totally because there'll it. be yep. there'll be there'll be senior housing that's been sorely missed in this how in this town for 299 years yeah. well they were six working, months <laughs> and 18 days they were working in the fields and they died at home it was a different time however <laughs> well well it was sort yeah. of it uh but but the the fact of the matter is in my opinion is that this town has has stood up to the plate has has gone above and beyond mm -hmm. um Public hearings, public comment, uh, reaching out, reaching out to to everybody that that um, um, that we could about the project. Not afraid to talk about it at town meeting on our our public access TVs. Um, documented why we think that's a good location, um, and and I think our positions in the town more more so. The town's right. position on that project are very well taken. I think we did a lot of things right. Not only did we do a lot of things right, but but <clears throat> what 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 the town is doing is right for right for our citizens, mm -hmm. and and I stand I'll stand behind it. Sure, two thousand percent. But yeah. I know what you're saying. I appreciate what you're saying. No question about the parking. I'd suggest yep, we, get, I we get it staked off so we stay in our area. We will. Right. Yep. We will. All right, next up, uh, appoint CPC Administrative Assistant. Sherry? Uh, yes, so uh, Sarah Snyder, the chairman of the um, Community Preservation Committee, and I um, conducted interviews. We had three applicants, one withdrew. So there were two applicants um, for that position. It's approximately 15 hours a month. And we'd like to recommend that Nakia Tomasic be appointed. I think that's what you said. Get there. <laughs> you have to yeah. Stop by genealogy, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> Scott, would you like to make that motion? I'll, uh, enter, <laughs> I'll uh, advance uh, Ms. Tomasic's appointment. <laughs> I'll second. Well, you guys are very good at that. So. All right, we have a motion made and seconded on the appointment of CPC Administrative Assistant. As I understand it, Sherry, uh, you you talk to to Sarah about maybe having the administrative assistant spend more time 
in talking with you so you're better understanding exactly what's going on and right um, she'll be helping with uh, project management for all the CPA projects and we'll be able to coordinate deadlines <coughs> excellent all of those things during the during the day um, when I have regular office hours and, and I guess that's one of the things I should have mentioned in my last update as a member member of the CPC we had a uh, we had a meeting last week um, where many of the projects came that have that are in you know being worked on or have been recently completed gave the cpc an update about where they stood and how much you know how things are going so we did have a very we had a very very good meeting we're, we're talking to people lessons learned and such also so and in this the cpc committee just so the board knows um uh, fully support what what sherry said um about the project management and follow up on the on the management as well. With all these grants that we've been receiving, there's a big yep. administrative caseload that goes with right. it. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, so we, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by, by saying aye. 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 Sherry, we got three zero on the appointment. <clears throat> uh, approval of municipal finance guide. Um, so the municipal finance guide that you have before you um, is the result of a community compact um, grant agreement for technical assistance that the town received. <clears throat> we worked with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments um, on developing that guide. And uh, Joe Markarian, who assisted the town with the capital planning uh, guide, um, helped us to develop that. So acceptance of that report, it will um, be submitted to the state and um, will um, also help us when we're applying for future grants, um, give us some extra points. But I think more importantly, it helps us um, develop sus sustainable best practices yep. um, as we're looking at all of our um, financial management policies and procedures. Uh, we now have the capital plan in place and this is more of a long-range forecasting tool um, that we can use to um, look at the impact of different projects on the taxes, on funds that are available. It's a pretty comprehensive guide. So. The only thing, if I could, Mr. Chair, shoot that. There was one thing, if I could, add to the calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, sure, we talked this morning. I know this is late in, late in the process, but if we can add to the calendar, it ends in April for last town meeting. There's no actually closing out of the budget that's reflected in here. And okay. we, just, we just talked about making sure we have a policy that ensures that we have administrative as well as accounting close out of the right. budget. I think that's a perfectly fine table to add, element of the table to add after, uh, after the April piece. It doesn't end with annual town meeting. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's good, Scott. And then the last, Thank you. if I could one more, Mr. Chair. Yep. There is under uh, free cash allocation. This is a, a um, page 11 under policies, I believe. And uh, we have, as of now, our current policy is to add uh, is to project for 30 percent to capital stabilization of remaining free cash. There was an active discussion at this town meeting, and I wonder how this policy, how this here being submitted, is a draft. That leads me to one other thing: if it's if it's a draft to be accepted, these percentages will will, will change. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And we no. can update that. We can update yeah. that. So so that said, under municipal guidelines, could I ask that? Maybe the very first page uh, after content, I'm sorry, the page after content and before the tab bylaw mm -hmm. has uh, our accepted by, as we have in the past with our policies, we have yep. accepted and amended. Yep. Yep. Well, this should be a living document anyway. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, but right. I, think, I think that piece has got to be somewhere in there. Can you include that, Sherry? We want a motion to or just uh, move move to include those uh, subtle changes, and I appreciate the work codifying what's been a lot of pieces of policy into right. one so area. Collect on yeah. one spot. You want to second that, Dave? I do. Second. A motion made and seconded to uh, make the small changes that that Scott has uh, referred to. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. No, and you know the thing is, I mean. This is a lot of this is a lot There's of a work. lot of work here. Yeah. 
But this is work that we've done yeah. you know, for a long time. Just capture. Right. right. You, you can actually just, you just can hold capture. your hand. And, and I have it. this all electronically so the um, spreadsheets Good. can roll over and we can, you know, Great. year to year. Okay. But can you make a motion also to accept it? Yeah, move to revisions? accept. Okay. Move to accept with revisions. Second. A yeah, motion made and seconded to accept the um, municipal finance guide for the town of Sunderland. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Three zero. Okay. All right, summer schedule, 2018. Who is the summer schedule as presented? Second. Motion made. Seems like our summer schedule is starting awful late this year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that That's why I left it well, kind of open right, right. And as to when we went no, to. Yeah. See, it's on paper. The real <laughs> challenge is do we actually end up adhering to that? Because there's been years see. where, like, we'd be lucky. We usually to wait until, yeah. yeah. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to accept the uh, presentation of summer schedule. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We'll try the summer schedule as presented. 3 0. Uh, Do you want to talk about the recap? Yeah, our cap. Um, you may recall last year they submitted an application for a grant to the U to USDA mm. um, for funding to provide technical assistance to various communities um, with regard to any projects, community facilities projects that might be eligible for USDA funding. So what they would do under that grant if it was funded is they would help us apply for funding. Um, they would identify uh, training and technical expertise that might be available um, to us under the USDA um, various programs. Okay. So if you um, would like to participate in that grant application, uh, it wasn't funded last year. Uh, they'd like to give it another try this year. So. Yeah. Motion. Uh, move to enter into this process. Second. And motion made and seconded to uh, enter into the RCAP with this grant from the USDA Community Facilities Technical Assistance and Training. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And that concludes tonight's agenda. Right? Public comment? No comment. Nice. Do you want to hold on goal discussion? What's that? The, the, under um, Board of Selectmen. You wanted to discuss three goal. I, yeah, I it was a week thanks. Oh, okay. next week. I wrote them down too. All right, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> next. Well, I'll give you a week to think about what uh, you wrote just down. Just in case just I, just in case I get my inner Libra on, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Our next meeting, um, Lou Rubito will be here from Howard Hudson and Steen to um, present the peer review for yep. the North Main Street reconstruction project. So there was a conference call. There was a conference call. Um, there was. With the peer? Yes. Oh, you want to talk about that before we adjourn? No, I was going to read a historical piece first, but. I know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Davey, you want to share? Right, it, was, it was a good, um, a good call. We recapped everything. And um, uh, at the end, we ended up talking about that, I guess, the compromise solution. So that that's sort of the one that's going to. Be presented. Yeah, be put forth. And they, they offered to come out and meet with the um, historical. historical commission and have their historical folks come out because you have the discussion about mm -hmm. um, the historical character and everything. And um, they kind of discuss where they stood on um, like the shared path usage and things like that and everything too. So, so side, what we left in with homework, it was, you know, sidewalk location, widths, yep. shared path or not shared path. Road widths, speed, those were areas of concern. Right. Marking, areas of concern. Those <laughs> no. all came up in the conference call. Yeah, yeah, they did, they did a good job of covering yeah, that. The conference stuff. call was with MassDOT and um, CHA. Great, yes. Yep. So it was, it was a good call. And so I would invite anybody that's interested in uh, North Main Street reconstruction to come next come week, next 630. Week, yeah. no. 630. Yeah. Next week is the 11th. Exactly. 611. Right. Yeah. So I would I would strongly consider and and basically so we the peer review has been done mm -hmm. and I thought that's what we had asked for. Yep, correct. Um and they looked at the three options that are on the table and they're able to speak on all three and and which 
which will work. Right, pluses, minuses, you know, because each one has some issues, mm -hmm. you know, with it. Excellent. So. Good. Yeah. All righty. Mr. Uh, Bergeron, you want to? Yeah, if I could. With, with, with all of the current uh, cofeffing that's been going on, mm -hmm. <laughs> the cofeffing, I would, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, present to the record a small comment from uh, 1776, a minor document called the Declaration of Independence that uh, has quotes including, uh, he has refused his assent to laws to most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migration hither and raising the conditions of new appropriations of these lands. I would remind the president as he tweets that he has absolute power that he forgot to read something. Hmm. Well, Sounds like a king they're referring to if there. You, if you ask be. George Washington, I agree. He didn't want to be king. He's actually said everyone should read his resignation address. I keep, oh, a, maybe, copy, I keep a copy in my truck. Maybe, maybe you'll share that with us sometimes. Huh? Maybe. It's a great little book. Is that I'll a pocket have. constitution? And declaration. Ms. Moore would be proud. She's the gov teacher at Frontier. Good. Well, I, I just think it, it's interesting because... Mr. Washington, George, the father of our nation, did not want to, did not want, uh, and I did not want a, a royalty or no. he, he believed in the common man serving for the common good of all. Correct. So I would suggest as we sleepwalk into the potential authoritarianism that someone wakes up soon. I'll second that. Well, I'm I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn before I get really started. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll second. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. I believe. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. We will be adjourned, Sherry, with a three-zero vote at seven fifty-one. Thank you, Epcat. <laughs>